The story of the peppered moth is one of the most famous evolutionary tales, a fantastic example of evolution in action. The change was a simple one. The original pale spotted form of the moth, known as Typica, was replaced by a darker or melanic form called Carbonaria in a period that coincided with Britain's Industrial Revolution. In a place like Manchester during the 19th century, the typical form, which is a speckled black and white, would rather stand out and the dark form, which came to be called Carbonaria, was really an extreme sooty black. So it caught people's imagination for that reason. The peppered moth's rapid change from light to dark became the textbook example of natural selection in action, as it demonstrated a clear genetic change based on differential survival and reproduction of genes. But it wasn't enough to simply assume that camouflage was the reason for the success of the melanic carbonaria morph during the 1800s. As always, scientists needed evidence. In the 1950s, uh, a man called Bernard Kettlewell, who was a medic by profession, but a, a very keen and distinguished lepidopterist, got himself a grant um, in order to, uh, first of all, map the distribution of the dark forms in the country at that time, and secondly, to investigate more fully the possibility that these things were black because they were on black backgrounds, and that made them well camouflaged. And, uh, in the course of doing this, he started using what was then a fairly novel approach, which was an experimental approach, and said, well, why don't we just see whether the birds eat them or not? So there they were in front of them on the trees, and they could photograph birds coming to eat them. And they uh, published this work, including photographs um, in the 1950s, late 50s, um, showing quite clearly that there was bird predation and there was differential predation. So, Hey presto, here was some information which suggested that birds probably um, exercise selective um, predation on the moths. Since Kettlewell's experiments in the 1950s, the introduction of pollution control laws and clean air legislation has brought about a huge environmental change in Britain's historically industrial areas. If you take areas like Manchester, um, where atmosphere had been extremely polluted, uh, pollution was dropped fairly radically as a result of new housing. The old housing was being pulled down and was being replaced by oil-fired or, or, or electrically heated buildings, so that there was a, a massive change in the amount of, of smoke deposition in particular. As cities and their surrounding countryside returned to their less polluted conditions, the Carbonaria form once again became conspicuous to predators, giving the advantage back to the lighter typicas. The, uh, the situation has produced the mirror image, if you like, of the 19th century situation. So there's a, a nice, uh, uh, complete, complete story here, which, um, given that there are so few melanics now um, present in the wild to be collected or to be studied, means that the uh, whole phenomenon is uh, just about over. But the peppered moth story was far from over, and its reputation as the textbook example of evolution in action was about to be put to the test. It all began when the geneticist and professor of evolution at Cambridge, Michael Majerus, noticed some minor problems of Kettlewell's famous experiments. Majerus took this information, published it in a, a book, and in due course this was reviewed in Nature by a man called Jerry Coyne, who wasn't directly familiar with the, uh, the work that had been taking place in Britain on the peppered moth. He read the book, he saw this, this information and said, uh, oh, this all looks a bit alarming, it looks as if maybe we, we can't regard this as the perfect example of, of uh, natural selection or evolutionary change that we thought it was. And he did, in fact, use an unfortunate phrase, which was to say it was a bit like learning from his father that uh, Father Christmas didn't exist. Um, and this got picked up by all sorts of people. It, it was right, widely reported in newspapers and other media. And it was picked up by the um, 
creationist lobby in the United States in particular who said, ah, well, we can see that these people have been misleading us because they've been placing the moths in the wrong places. And maybe this is not an example of evolutionary change at all. I think perhaps Majerus felt slightly self-conscious about this because he felt that uh, he had stirred up a, a, a wide variety of, uh, of argument which he didn't uh, himself agree with and he decided that it was really important to repeat the experiments and do them in situations which um, were as realistic as possible. So he indulged in a seven-year study and indeed it did support the earlier uh, results that had been obtained in these other experiments. So although the, the experiments had their faults, had their weaknesses, Nevertheless, they did seem to be showing a result which was consistent. So the peppered moth story is solid. But although biologists have known for a long time that the difference between the two morphs is due to a change in a single gene, we've never actually known what that gene is. Until now. This kind of classic uh, case study of uh, rapid adaptation lack knowledge of the specific mutation that controls uh, this uh, qualitative difference between the black type known as Carbonaria and this kind of speckled form known as Typica or Typical. And so we set about trying to identify um, the molecular genetic basis of uh, the difference. By crossbreeding the two morphs in the lab, Tracking the movement of genetic markers on the chromosomes and sequencing the relevant sections of DNA, the team were able to zero in on the mutation, which turned out to be quite unusual. It was a big surprise to us that the functional mutation turned out to be the insertion of a large transposable element. Uh, these um, elements are sometimes referred to as uh, jumping genes, although they're not genes themselves. They are typically non-coding uh, sequences that uh, have uh, the ability to um, replicate themselves and insert themselves into different parts of the genome. Most of the time they are harmful to the organism, but occasionally, as happened in this case, the mutants that they produce are advantageous under the prevailing environmental conditions, in this case, industrial coal pollution. The advantage of this mutation being dependent on the environmental condition is now um, flipped in a relatively clean, non-coal polluted environment such that it's virtually gone extinct from the UK population, as has the phenotype that it produces, the Carbonaria form. Now that they knew the gene responsible, the team could use a little genetic trickery to actually estimate when the first black moth probably hatched. The mutation is most likely to have occurred sometime in the early 1800s, and that fits quite nicely with the period of the height of the Industrial Revolution. And so it's, it's nice that we've been able to kind of independently um, estimate the age of the, of the mutation itself. And so we're kind of using population genetics to reconstruct microevolutionary uh, history.